Hi everyone, this is Rachel Sandberg. Over the course of these videos, beginning with our examination of the use cases, we've come across examples of strategies to account for ethics. We say strategies because there are no actual best practices yet for dealing with sensitive information that is not technically private under the law. So we're hoping that you as a group can start discussing these and other ideas you've conceived of, and we can develop a set of norms and risk management strategies together. We have loosely organized the strategies we've seen in our view of an ascending order of the effort or difficulty in undertaking them. Reasonable minds may of course disagree. So far we've seen others implement via the use cases or we have raised all of the following possibilities. One, consult journal publication or professional association guidelines. As Vayena and colleagues point out though, these might not get you all the way to the question you're trying to answer. Two, develop local best practices. For instance, you could conduct decision-making within your research group, as the Gamergate research team did, or as we did at UC Berkeley for digitizing our collections. Three, you could impose access controls. For example, you could require user registration to view the material, or publish only data visualizations or extractions. But you'd need to consider the intersection with any publisher open data requirements. Four, undertake community engagement to consult with affected populations and ensure that benefit reverts back to the communities. Five, seek IRB involvement or approval, even if none is technically required. Of course, getting IRB review and approval for research that doesn't ordinarily require it can slow down the research process or overwhelm IRBs, so some fundamental structural changes at your institution might be needed. Six, adopt a new ethics or privacy paradigm. For example, moving from consent-based to harm avoidance. Unless you adopt a strict ethics of care and do no harm approach, you may need to develop a balancing test that you like. Polonetsky and colleagues have their risk assessment approach, and you saw at UC Berkeley Library, we have a value versus harm statement and guidelines we're developing. Implementing any of these strategies requires oversight and advocacy in varying degrees. For instance, regulations might need to be changed or the policies of review, review boards revised in order to adopt definitions for terms such as privacy, confidentiality, security, and sensitivity. As part of this institute, we can't necessarily achieve either regulatory change or changes to review boards on the spot, but we can bring strategies back to our institutions if we wish to pursue them. What we can also do as part of this institute is begin considering the development of guidance on research community norms and best practices. We're hoping to talk about each of these three oversight and advocacy prongs during our discussion session that follows. Thank you.